Hi, I'm Doug Tyson, and I'm here because you're going to be using statistics and probability with applications, fourth edition. I wrote the teacher's edition, and I've also used this textbook. I've used um, many statistics textbooks over the years, and I'd like to share some of my thoughts about planning the course and a lesson and how you organize a course in statistics. You may be an experienced teacher or a novice teacher. You may be an experienced statistics teacher or a novice statistics teacher. And I'd still like to share what I think about planning and how you get it done and how you get things accomplished in the classroom. So my goal is to get you to teach like a veteran, a statistical veteran from day one. And uh, just to share with you a little bit about myself and my passion, I do what you do every day. I teach in Central York High School in Central York School District in York, Pennsylvania. I have been teaching for a long time and I do what I love. I love teaching and in particular I love teaching statistics and I have a real heart for helping teachers to teach and teach statistics in particular. It is not an easy job. We have a difficult job. Sometimes it can feel unrewarding. And other times it can feel amazingly rewarding. But it takes planning to get all that done. And so I'm here to try to help you with that. I've tried to keep the novice and the experienced stats teacher in mind with my ideas and thoughts. And I do that when I wrote the teacher's edition. I did the same thing. I tried to keep my perspective both for somebody first coming into statistics teaching and also for somebody who is an experienced teacher. I think you'll find something for everyone. Now we're here to talk about planning, but I'm going to be honest. If you are like me and you're a math teacher and you're going to teach statistics, it's going to take a transition. I used to be a math teacher. I guess that's the better way to say it. And now I'm a statistics teacher. My full course load is just statistics courses. It's very popular at our school. And I couldn't be happier. I, I really enjoy it. But you have to plan for some changes in your, in your perspective and in your academic focus. So uh, statistics, the stock and trade of statistics, is uncertainty and chance. And that is very different from mathematics. And um, so you have to plan for that. And you can see down here we have on the left, oh, where did my mouse go? There we go. Uh, on the left, we have the graph of a function and the equation of the function. And that's a mathematical construct. On the right, we have what the same thing would look like perhaps in statistics. And in statistics, we still have an equation, although you'll notice some differences. Sometimes we use names for variables. Sometimes we use y and x. There's this funny hat. It's called a hat there. And when you look at the graph, I still see the graph of the function. That's what we would call the mathematical model. But I also see individual data values. Those are the individual points in the scatter plot. And you'll notice that the, in this case, the soda remaining, that would be the y variable, does vary. Even for the same uh, amount of time tapping in seconds, the soda remaining does vary. For four seconds there, there's variation, uncertainty. And statistics very much reasons in the face of uncertainty and chance. We still want to, to make the best and most reasonable conclusions we can. There's a lot of explanation and exploration in the course, and that's different in many ways than mathematics. And so you have to prepare yourself for that. And we tend to use real data. Data are just uh, numbers or information in context. And so you'll notice again here on the left, um, this mathematical function doesn't really have a context. And in some ways, mathematics gains some power by abstracting. But statistics has a different focus, and it's usually buried uh, completely within the context. It is en engulfed by the context. And so that's just a difference that you have to plan for. 
So to be able to plan effectively for the course and for lessons and units, you should have some sense of what the book structure is all about. And so this image here is borrowed from our textbook. And you can see in the brief contents, the book is structured by chapters. It's very familiar to many of us. And within each chapter is a series of lessons. Many textbooks might call this a section as opposed to a lesson. There are 11 total chapters in the textbook, and each of them has about five to eight lessons per chapter. Okay. And if you look here, you'll see the picture of the opening of one of those lessons in the textbook. And you'll notice here, right at the start, right after the title, oops, right here, is learning targets. And those are a big feature of this book. There are three learning targets in every lesson, caveat. Occasionally there's a lesson with two learning targets. But the learning targets are there to focus everybody, to focus teachers, to focus students on what it is students should know and be able to do at the end of the lesson. Each learning target has an example somewhere in the lesson that highlights and illustrates the big ideas in that learning target. And so if you look at the example shown here in blue, this is the title of the example. But in orange, checking for association, that's an abbreviated learning target. It matches one of the three, possibly two learning targets in the lesson. And it's slightly abbreviated so that you could tell what is matched with what. And then at the end of the lesson is what we call the lesson app. Now this is a fantastic feature of our book. Um, the lesson app is a single context within which all learning targets or most all of the learning targets in the lesson are reviewed or applied. Right? Lesson application, lesson app. And this one's about young squirrels and whether or not they're more cautious about being fed in New York uh, in Central Park. You'll notice one important thing here on the top right. This lesson app has a play button. And that links directly to a video if you have the ebook, and if not, you can find it online at the student site and the teacher site. That, that video explains the lesson app to students and to teachers and goes through the answer step by step. And remember, that, that summarizes, for the most part, all or most of the learning targets in the lesson. So it's a really valuable feature. And I'll talk a little bit later about how I use it within a single lesson, what, what my plan is for a lesson app. It's one that we don't think you should miss. There are also video explanations of lesson apps. Okay, so now I put that in parentheses. Um, the answers to the lesson apps are also in the teacher's edition. So these uh, lesson apps can help these videos, can help you feel more comfortable with the content, but also help students review the content before they try homework exercises or if they get stuck on homework exercises. So that ha that's how the book is laid out. Um, there's a final feature at the end of the, the chap or at the end of each lesson and that's a table relisting, this is review, the learning targets. But importantly uh, you'll see there are two columns. There is for each learning target the page on which the corresponding example could be located and also the the exercise numbers at the end of the book right here sorry at the end of the lesson right here that correspond to that particular learning target so if a student is having trouble distinguishing between explanatory and response variables there are exercises 7 through 10 that review them that can be really helpful if a student's having difficulty you as the teacher have a few few extra exercises at your disposal to maybe help give them some practice and diagnose and help them understand what they're seeing or doing uh, incorrectly. So as a teacher, I've always believed that the first day is critical. And I think it, it's important to plan your first day. I feel like, for many of us, we're coming off of the end of uh, summer break and uh, Perhaps your administration uh, doesn't give you a lot of time before students arrive. Perhaps you just came back from vacation. 
but it's too easy to let the first day just become an afterthought. I think it has to become very intentional to get the most out of your course and to get your students excited about what you want to do and, and what you want to teach them. And so on the first day, I would strongly encourage you, don't go over this opus. Don't even bother. Uh, and I, I wouldn't go over classroom rules either. And I think that's helpful for students. Remember, at least where I, where I teach, this course is designed for 10th, 11th, 12th graders. They've navigated the school system for 10 or 11 or 12 years without my help whatsoever. They've, they've made it so far and they've done good. So I figure they probably have a pretty good idea of how to just move through the day without going over classroom rules. So what I do want to do with my students is an activity. I want to get them excited about statistics. I want them to, to look forward to coming into my class as much as possible and maybe to just be intellectually curious, to just wonder about something. And so I've designed a lesson for the first day, and it involves a story called Smelling Parkinson's Disease. In the picture of the woman you see here, this woman is Joy Milne, and she claims that she can smell Parkinson's disease. Her husband was afflicted with Parkinson's disease. He is now deceased. And she came and out and made that claim, that she can smell it. And that's a, a remarkable state. If you stop and think about it, as to my knowledge, no other human in the world has claimed to be able to smell a disease. So if she can do something that no other human in the world can do, I kind of see that as a superpower. And so it's a, it's a stunning claim. I mean, whether you're going to agree with this, the idea of a superpower or not, I get students excited about this. This activity requires little preparation. Uh, and there's a new app on staplet.com that, that basically facilitates the technology side of this for students and teachers. So you don't really have to know much. Uh, it is very low preparation. It's very engaging. It has very high impact. And so it's a wonderful first day activity for me. I have had students in my classroom who, who have loved ones, who have Parkinson's. One of my students had a father who had Parkinson's, uh, who was a former colleague of my wife. And it can be treated with dignity and respect and be a wonderfully successful lesson and was very, very engaging and intriguing. The full activity and video have a description and a, a well, and along with the videos introducing the lesson, there's a video that explains how I run the lesson. So all of that can be found at the website Mr. Tyson Stats forward slash uh, AP Stats. Mr. Tyson Stats .com forward slash AP Stats. I really encourage you to. Please don't get me wrong. There are wonderful other first day activities, please. Uh, and they're very engaging too. And in general, I would just suggest do an activity with your students. Get started in statistics. Collect some data. Do a little inferential thinking. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. That's what this lesson leads you through informally, is this idea of inferential thinking. But they're already pre-made for you. Now, if you're not sure where to get other activities, I'll talk about that in just a little bit. So now, let's actually talk about planning the course. So you, we plan the first day. We're going to talk about planning the course. How do I plan an entire course out? So the first things to know um, are just the number of class meetings. Schools now especially have very different kinds of schedules, very different kinds of class meeting structures. Um, so just knowing how many times you meet with your students can be very helpful. And also know if you have to meet any state requirements for this course. And then you can look at the pacing guide uh, in the in the textbook or in the teacher's resource materials. So um, there's a 180 day pacing guide and you would find this in what we call the blue pages. So in the teacher's edition, only in the teacher's edition, before the chapter are specially colored plate pages like you see here. They're, they're very pale or light blue and so we call them the blue pages. 
And one of the things I give you there is this, this pacing guide. Now there are other things like um, the big picture. How does this chapter fit in with previous and future chapters? There are habits, there's advice about habits that I want to develop in my students and uh, brief content overviews and resources that you can use to teach the course that aren't mentioned elsewhere, other, other resources that I can list for you, and resources that we've provided you, they're all right there listed in these blue pages. But for planning, the pacing guides are also there. And so there's a 180-day pacing guide and also a 90-day pacing guide. I teach in a school where we teach the course in 90 days, in this, what we would traditionally call a semester. And so my pacing looks much more like the 90-day pacing guide. Now there are also other, I, I know, if you're given 90 days, fire drills, emergencies, assemblies, every kind of thing comes up. And so you may not have exactly 90 days. And so if that's the case, you can go to the teacher's resource materials and there is additional information in there about it, about how to trim down from 90 to 85 or 80 days, what things you might want to, to omit or um, not include or skip in your course to, to fit different kinds of schedules. So after planning the course, um, you basically want to plan out unit by unit. Right, so now you, you know about how many days you have. How are we going to break that up into units? And units essentially are chapters here. So you can plan on one lesson per class meeting, one lesson per day, if you will. And then you can adjust as needed. Now, in addition to one lesson per class meeting, um, and again, I remind you, check out the blue pages. You can see down here, this is from chapter two. And the, the, besides the big picture, there's the pacing and assignment guides. And so here's the, the pacing guide, the, the 180 or the start of it. So after this, you know, one lesson per class meeting or so, then you should definitely plan on doing the in-book activities. Now, there are ones that have been tested by teachers, real teachers, in real classrooms, just like yours. And you should check in the teacher's edition on the side of the activity will be an activity overview in the teacher's edition. And it should give you some sense of how much time that will take. Generally, these activities are short. They do not take full class periods. And so they're meant to be woven right into your lesson. And so you don't need to set aside any extra days for the in-textbook activities. So as you're looking through your unit, um, you should also include, besides roughly one day per lesson, a mid-chapter quiz. I usually do that. Now, if you don't want to do that, then at least do some review mid-chapter, some check-in. And there's advice, again, in the pacing guide and in the teacher's resource materials about what things you might want to do. I have some activities for you to do. Um, I have... Uh, here an optional assignment. You can assign certain even numbers to review things that you've seen before, certain even exercises, and more on exercises later. You should also try to plan some sort of culminating activity where appropriate. There are some already made for you called student projects along with scoring rubrics. They're already in the teacher resource materials for you. Uh, and in just a second, we'll talk about where other places are that you might get activities, both for a single lesson and for a culminating activity at the end of a, a unit. So you may want to build those in. It depends on your comfort level. But we really suggest maybe even after your first year or second year, give it a try. I think you'd be surprised and pleasantly surprised. I always build in a review day or two. And that, that can be very much your preference as a teacher and knowing your students and then a test day. And so I add all that together to kind of get the length of a unit. How long is this unit going to take me? So ideas for activities. Remember I said I come back to this. Uh, you can use the teacher's resource materials. I have some in there. You can go to statsmedic.com. They have a lesson plan for each lesson. They have an activity for each lesson to engage your students each and every day. Each and every day. That's, that's our goal. 
plan the course, plan your unit or units, and then plan your lesson. So what about just getting in there every day with students, planning your lesson, how should the lesson go? Can I please ask you, I'm just first going to really encourage you, stop and read the annotations in the teacher's edition. Annotations just refer to, if you look over here, this is a student page. And in the teacher's edition, it's surrounded, it's shrunk down like this, and surrounded on the side and perhaps at the bottom with things that I've written, a lot of things that I've written. Each and every lesson has a bell ringer, which is usually just a question or a short little uh, maybe data collection activity to do with your students. If you want something just to get them started for just two or three minutes, bell ring, then it's here for you. And that may let you get attendance done or something like that. But the annotations also include, I mentioned this earlier, an activity overview. So here's an activity that might be done in class with your students that we would recommend because it's included right in the textbook. And I give you advice about how long it should take, what materials you need, um, some, some teaching advice, just having done these before with students, and then suggested answers. In addition, you're going to find other annotations that are common student errors, everyday stats. Where, where do we see this in our everyday life? Uh, you may see um, just teaching tips, just general teaching tips. Read these. These are all going to get you to be just a little bit better and more rounded and more versed than your students. So that you can feel much more um, in a position to aid them and instruct them. So as I plan a lesson, read the annotations. Do it the night before, two nights before, whenever you can. And then my lesson tends to break down into about four segments, four main segments. First, homework review or a prior lesson app. So many teachers like to use lesson apps at the end of the period, and, and that's perfectly fine. That works really well. I personally use the lesson app from the previous lesson as the beginning of my next day, and that's in some ways a bell ringer for my students. They come in, and boom, they know to start, unless they have other directions for me, they're going to start on the lesson app from the day before. And it's a great way to connect to their previous learning. Right, to reactivate it and to strengthen it. Second phase of my lesson is an activity. And if there are in book activities, as we mentioned, here's the candy grab. Do them for sure. You can also find other activities at Stats Medic, as I mentioned. If you are plugged into the AP Stats community, if you are, there are great free things that people offer all the time. And then in, in, after the activity in my lesson, I always include examples. Now, you can use the examples right in the textbook. They're right there, and you can go through those with your students. But I've also created alternate examples for every single example in the book. You'll see them in the annotations, in the margins of the teacher's edition. But also in the teacher's resource materials, I put them right into a Word document so that you can just use them as you like. You can copy and paste them into, into a handout or anything you want. And then the last part is either the lesson app for many teachers, or for me, I usually assign a few even number problems at the end of the, the lesson is exercises. I choose some of the even numbers. I tend to save odds for homework and I have them do the evens. Uh, you can see here the lesson app does have the, the answers right here, right in the margin, and uh, this is from Lesson 3.5. Remember that play button means there's a video as well. So that's the basic structure of a lesson for me every day, and, and it works very well. And that actually makes the days when there is a change feel kind of cool. There's a change. You have a little routine, but change is good. And so um, before I wrap up here, I want to talk a little bit about homework and exercises because that, that's usually an important part. Let the student practice just a little bit. It doesn't have to be overkill. So there are five types of exercises in, in SPA 4. Building concepts and skills. Now these are generally reading comprehension and they're there 
to help assess when you are concerned if your students really understood the reading, if you assign reading, or if you want them to, to pick some things up by reading just a few things, you can use some of these build, building concepts and skills exercises. Second, you have mastering concepts and skills exercises. And these just assess a single learning target. And they're the ones in this uh, learning target table at the end of the text, at the end of every lesson. And you can see here this learning target, make predictions using regression lines, keeping in mind the dangers of extrapolation. Each of these exercises from 9 through 12 assesses that particular learning target. So applying concepts had, uh, are exercises that combine two or more learning targets in the same context. And then they're extending the concepts, which is exactly like it sounds. You can think of them as a enrichment. If you have a student who's really curious, you can take them a step further. And then finally, recycle and review. I always assign at least one recycle and review exercise every, every time I uh, assign homework problems, homework exercises. And that's because I always want my students to review. Just one. Just one question. And if you, if you take a look at them in the book, you'll see that the recycle and review exercises have a little code at the start that tells the students what lesson it's from. So they can actually just go back and find it quickly. It is not too laborious to go back and review just one question, just flip back to, and tell them exactly where to flip back to. So finally, how do I assign homework, or what about assigning homework? Well, if you have sapling, your reps are going to address homework via sapling. They'll take care of that. If you don't have sapling, then check out the blue pages in the TE. I've already mentioned the pacing guide, but also note this column here, the, the column at the far right, has a suggested assignment. And you can use that to help you out. Typically, the answers, uh, the, the uh, suggested assignment includes odd numbers. And the answers to those odds are in the back of the book. So if you're a teacher who prefers not have the students not have the answers um, while they're doing the exercise, you can actually just assign the even number that, that it's paired with. And so uh, 7 will be paired with 8. And so 8 would be very similar to 7, and you can assign that instead. There are explanation videos for all lesson apps. That's if students are having trouble with homework you can give them access to those so that they can have review and help, help them understand what's going on in each exercise. There are also explanation videos for selected exercises. Every learning target has a, uh, an, an exercise, one exercise, somewhere in the back with a little play button icon. Students can go watch that one being solved and, and by an experienced stat teacher. So I try to be really efficient with class time. I don't want to spend lots of time going over homework. I want students to understand the concepts, but I don't want to have to go over every answer. Remember, they do have access to all the answers. But for my class, remember I begin with a lesson app from the day before, it, we very much review those, those learning targets, those concepts, as we do the, the lesson app. And I can address concerns and questions from students right there in that context. So, my advice, start with a recommended assignment. See how it's going for you and your students, and adjust as necessary. But at least you have something to begin with right here. So before I go, I'd like to take a minute to thank you on behalf of Darren, Josh, and Luke, the lead authors, and all of the people you see on the right, the content advisory and uh, supplements team say thank you. We're all real teachers. We do what you do for a living. We know the struggles, the difficulties, the joys, and, and the travails sometimes of the job. And we really appreciate it. We take our time outside of our day to put together materials that we think will be useful, helpful, and effective for teaching your students statistics. We really want to thank you that you're giving us the chance to show you how we do it. Good luck as you plan your course and teach your course. If you ever see me, stop and say hi.